So I want to make it very clear that the title of this video is clickbait. There were no knives, nor guns, nor fighting on this ride. I just felt like it was a good example to what it would be like to bring this bike on a geared group ride. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into the video. So what is a knife to a gunfight? Well, this is the knife and all other geared bikes are the guns. And why do I call this a knife? Well, because this is a single speed bicycle and most people would not take a single speed bike out to a geared group ride, especially a A group. And what that means is they're going to drop you and they're going to try to drop you because first off you brought a bike with only one gear and you got flat bars on a road bike. This bike is a lot of fun and let's get into it. So this bike was a bike that I've had for quite a few years. This is the same bike that I crashed on and it's hung in my garage for a long time until I got the confidence to build it back up. I put flat bars on it and I put a 53 tooth front gear and a 16 tooth back gear. The seat has been a stripped seat so it's just the carbon saddle plate and I made the front stem on uh, my milling machine that I have and so it's made out of aluminum, cyclocross, heavy rims on it and it's just a hodgepodge of parts. So let's get in the video and see how long this knife can stay in the gunfight. So for years I have rode with this crew. I know a lot of them, we've done a lot of adventures together, and they're a good group of cyclists. Now this is an A group, but this A group will kind of wait for you. Uh, they're not going to wait a long time. You need to be very close to the rest points or the regroup points. So knowing all of that, my goal was to be as smart as I could be. I have understood by riding my fixed gear with this group that there are a few things that I have to do to hang with them. One, I have to be very calculated in my time up on the front. And two, I have to pick my wheel properly. I will say that if you wanna hang in any A group ride, those two things are very important to learn. Whose wheel to hang on and to calculate your time in the front. Now there are a few people on this ride tonight that are really, really strong. So the first road I was worried about was Brown. I think Brown total is a little over three miles and normally the group kind of blows apart. It's just how Brown goes. And I'm able to make it to the end of Brown. And so I don't ask this in my videos very often, but if you're not subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe. You can hit the like button and do all those things. But seriously, thanks for watching this video. So I can't remember this name off the top of my head, but it was definitely an area where quite a few people attacked. The group blew apart because a guy hit a pothole and I did my best to bridge up and to hang on. So to be very clear with you, I did ramp this footage a little bit up to about 125% so that it would be a little shorter clip. But just know that I'm gutting myself and there's a massive headwind which is making this even worse. This is a known sprint point or attack point on this route. A lot of guys will group together and go on an attack because this is a pretty good road for it. It has a good flat area where you can put down a lot of power and then it has a massive downhill. And at this point, the guys start to gap me because they're keeping a faster speed downhill than I can. And after the massive downhill, there is a uphill and the guys can climb exponentially faster than I can. And so now I'm just trying to manage matches and not burn all the matches in the pack. I'm still in front of the group, 
but I'm off of the lead pack. And so I know that there is a regroup section coming up here in a second. And so I just manage my effort so that way I can recover by the time I get to the regroup. So as the ride went on, I kept running out of matches. I would have to burn a few matches to hang with them to keep their pace on the flat or to keep the pace on the climb. And honestly, there are a few areas that my legs were cramping so bad. Sorry guys, I was cramping. I had to hold it together. I did my best to regroup and allow my muscles to rest just for a second so that I could get back after it. Honestly, it's been a long time since I put this much effort into a two hour ride. I find myself back up at the front and I'm having to manage my time on the front. Remember I said, you have to pay attention to how long you're on the front and it's getting far into the ride and I should not be up on the front. The back portion of this route has a lot more elevation than the front, has a lot of pitchy climbs. So this is one of the faults of the bike. It cannot keep the downhill speed like a geared bike can. I maxed out at about 31 miles an hour, and as you can see, the guys got me really big. This is another regroup point, and my goal is just to make it to the regroup point, so that way I don't get left. I am hurting really bad. So on this Tuesday night route, there is an A and B group, and the A and B groups come together very close to the end of the ride. And I think there was about 40 cyclists out on this Tuesday night combining the A and B group. We turn onto Kannapolis Parkway and the groups link up, which then makes the Kannapolis Parkway sprint even more difficult. I know that we'll be keeping 28 to 32 miles an hour on this road easy. And I know that I'll be fine with 28, but 32, and I'll be a dead man. So I'm at the back of the pack, trying to hold onto a wheel, trying to get as low on the drop bars as I can to stay as aero as possible to reduce wind drag. Oh, and one of the highlights of this ride was seeing my good friend, Dolores Coughlin. She's an incredible cyclist and it's always good to see her out on the rides. So the last little bit of this Kannapolis Parkway is a big push, a big effort. And I have to say, I'm highly surprised that I'm able to stay with the group with this gear set up. A big thank you to David Doolittle for that massive pull and helping me cut the wind. This is the last section that I'm honestly concerned about. Everything else in, I can smooth pedal and I can say that I stayed with the group. I honestly can't believe that I made it to the end of the group ride with the group. I knew for certain that there would be areas that I would get dropped. So to Brad, to Walter, and to Garrett, I thank you for not destroying me too bad. And especially on Saul, I know y'all could have ran off and left me, but you let me go up with you. So listen, this bike is a lot of fun. Go out and have fun on bikes. That's what bikes are all about. Until next Thursday, adios. Yeah, I had her at like four o'clock in the morning.